Hi, I'm Jo from JH Leather, and in this make along video, we're going to be making this beautiful satchel. Now, before we get started, I want to take a minute to thank Metropolitan Leather for supporting this video. Now, if you don't know, Metropolitan Leather is one of my main suppliers here in the UK, and they very kindly supplied me with the leather for this video. Now, the leather I chose was from their Libden collection, which is one of my favorites that they have to offer. And there is a link in the description below for you to check out their website and all the other wonderful leather that they have. So as always, the patterns are available to purchase via my website and there is a link in the description. Once you've downloaded and printed them out, we are now ready to start assembling. So there is a measurement guide on page one and there is also a layout guide for the main body, which is numbered. So you can easily put them together. So what we're gonna do is roughly cut them out and then we're going to start assembling. Now the patterns fit onto an A1 size piece of card which is what I am using here and I started with the middle line of the patterns and then worked out from there and you want to make sure you get these nice and lined up. Once you've done your center line you can then work either side of that and get the breadth of your pattern stuck down onto your reinforcement card. Now, once you've done sticking your patterns down onto your reinforcement card, you can accurately cut them out. Now, with the main body, what I suggest you do is use a long ruler and a rotary knife to cut this. And do this in sections, because like I said, it is a long piece. And to get a nice, accurate cut, it's easier to do this in sections. For the corners, you can use a head knife or a craft knife. And like here, I am just nibbling away at it. And you can do the same method with other knives. For cutting out the oblongs on the shoulder pad and on the strap safe, you can either use an oblong punch, which is the size marked on the patterns, or you can use a circular punch and then cut between these with a knife. On your main pattern, you can also cut out these parts that I have here, which are where the safes are going to go as well as the logo. Now, as always, material thickness and fitting selections are included in the information pack that comes with the downloadable patterns. Now we're going to start by cutting three strips from the long side of our hide and then we're going to start drawing around our patterns. Now on the main body we're going to draw around the outside and then we're also going to draw in the cutout areas that are shown in the video here as well as marking where the stitching is going to be on the outside of the body and where the top of the pocket sits as well as where the point straps sit at the top of the pocket and at the bottom because we're going to use these as a guide when it comes to putting our bag together later on. Once you have all your patterns drawn out, I suggest you roughly cut these out and then we can do some accurate cutting when they are a bit of a more manageable size. So now you have your patterns drawn out and roughly cut, we can now accurately cut them out. And again, with this main bag, doing multiple cuts is easier and more accurate in the long run. Again, when it comes to the corners, I'm using my head knife for this because I find it very good for this job. And you can use other craft knives for this as well. We also want to cut out the oblong spots in both the shoulder pad and the strap safes.
Now when it comes to marking out our straps, we're going to start by just doing the two point straps that are going to be on our main bag. And as I'm using a shoulder here for my leather, I've put my point so it's facing up the strap because the stronger part of a shoulder is towards the center of the strap. And once you've got that marked out, you can then cut out two of these. And we want to make sure we nick the corners on this as well. So you should now have all your pieces cut out looking a bit like this. And we're now going to do some edging with our number one edge tool. So all the information on where you need to edge is included in the information pack that you get with your patterns. Now when it comes to the safes and the shoulder strap, we're going to use a wider edge tool and just take out the inside edge on the back side of the oblongs that we cut out. Now this is going to make it so the strap runs more easily through these. Now we have everything cut out, we can move on to do some staining and polishing. Now on mine, what I'm going to do is do like finishing touches on to some of the bits that are going to be more awkward to do later. And again, they are listed in the information pack that you get with your downloads. But they include things like the safes that are going to be attached to the bag, so are going to be a bit more awkward to get to the edges afterwards. We also want to stain inside the oblong holes on the shoulder pad and on the strap safes. Once we've got everything polished, we are then going to do some creasing. So I use a manual crease and I have it set to 1.5 millimeters and I heat it up on a electric crease heater. And we're gonna crease everywhere where we have done our staining. So all your pieces should now look a little bit like this and we're going to start to do some skiving. So the patterns have marked on where you need to mark your pieces to and once you have done that we can then actually move on to reducing the thickness. Now you can use a French shave and a stitch groove like I have in previous videos and I will put a link to that so you can see. But for mine I'm actually going to use my bell skiver because I find this easier on my elbow and as I have the machine here I might as well use it. So now you have your bits skived and again information on how much to skive is in the information pack. We now need to do a few finishing bits. So on the internal divider and on the pen loop we just need to make sure that the very edge is skived down to nothing. And on the point straps that are going to go on the bag, we want to skive the end down to nothing. And we're going to do this from about three quarters or 19 millimeters back from the end. With our D-ring shapes, we're going to skive down to half thickness on both ends. And we're going to do that from about three quarters of an inch or 19 millimeters back from the end. We're now going to start by assembling our magnetic tab. And we're going to start by marking the centre where the centre of our magnet needs to be. 
once you've got the centers marked on you can then get the backing piece for your magnet and just mark the, where the two legs are going to go through your leather and then using a sharpened screwdriver we can cut the slots Once we've done that, we can then put in and assemble both of the magnets. And now we are ready to start sticking some bits onto our main bag. So what we're going to do is using an edge rougher, we're going to rough up the edges of our leather where our tabs are going to stick. Now on the two safe strap sides, we're just going to do our scruffing just around the edge because we don't want to be able to see that once the tabs have been glued on. Once you've done with your edge roughing, you can then use your contact adhesive and glue both sides of your leather pieces and then stick them in place. Once the pieces that are shown in the video are stuck on, we're going to set our dividers to our stitching distance, which is shown on your patterns, or it is three millimeters. And we're going to draw around and mark on our stitching for each of the pieces that we have just stuck onto our bag. And once we've done that, we can then stitch mark. Now I'm using a four millimeter diamond chisel for this and you can stitch mark this all the way through should you wish. I am not because I'm quite happy to use a stitching awl for mine. Once we've done that, we can then start assembling our pen loop. And then we're gonna mark where it sits onto our pocket. And then once we've done that, we're actually going to put our pocket onto our main divider and lightly draw around it. And then using that as a guide, we can then rough up the edges just inside of that line. And then we're going to put some glue on both of the main pocket and on the divider. And then we're going to rough the edges on both sides of our loop and put glue on both sides of that as well. And then we are ready to assemble. So put your pocket on first and then using our mark that we made earlier, you can assemble your pen loop as well and get that stuck in. Once you're happy, grab your dividers and draw around your pocket. And then again, stitch mark all the way around this. Now you can use any size stitch marker you like. I just found that the four millimeter chisels that I had here worked really well for this project. When you're going around corners, it is easier to use a smaller iron like a two tooth. And once we've got that assembled, we can then move on to our shoulder pad. So what we're going to do is draw around it onto our lining and then we're going to roughly mark where the oval holes are. Because what we don't want to do is have glue under that area. So once we've drawn around it, we're then going to put glue onto our pad as well as onto the backing, avoiding those areas that we have marked on. And then we can stick that on and draw around with our dividers and again, stitch mark all the way around. We're now gonna assemble our D-ring shapes. And once they are glued together, we're actually gonna do some finishing touches because it's easier to do that now than when they are on the gusset. So we're gonna sand the edges and then re-stain and polish.
and then they are ready to get glued on. So you can see here I've cut out the guide on the pattern and what I'm doing is marking that on to the gusset without marking across the top because you will see that if you do. Once you've done that you can then scruff up that area as well as the back side of your shapes and then put glue on both pieces and start assembling. And once you're happy that they are glued on, you can just double check that they are straight with your ruler. And then again, we're going to go around this with our dividers and mark on our stitch line. But we want our stitching to go as close to that D ring as possible. And depending on what D you're using will depend on how close you can get, which is why the stitching isn't marked on these. But once you know how high you can get, you can then use your set square and mark that on the opposite side. So they are nice and even. And then once again, we are going to do our stitch marking. Now we've got everything stitch marked and ready to go, we're going to stitch everything that we have prepped up so far. Now we're going to start each piece by doing two back stitches and then we'll finish with one and a half back stitches so that both ends match. And we're gonna be double hand or saddle stitching around each piece. Now, like I said, I am quite happy to use an all when stitching because I find that easier than stitch marking all the way through and then not using one. Once we have finished stitching each piece, what we're going to do is we're going to trim the ends of our thread and then depending on what thread you're using, so I am using a linen thread, I'm going to use some PVA glue just on the ends to make sure that they stay where they're supposed to. If you are using a nylon thread for instance, you can actually melt the ends. And then once you've done that, you want to flatten your stitching. So for areas like these shapes, I'm going to be using a bone folder because that's not going to damage anything. So you should have all your pieces looking a bit like this. And what we're going to do next is just do a bit more finishing touches whilst it's flat because it's a lot more easy to do that now. So we're going to re-crease everything. And once we've done that, we can then mark on where the rest of that pocket is going to sit on the back of our main body. And then we're actually going to put our straps through the safes so that they are out of the way and not flapping around. Now for this, if you put your bone folder through, just to widen the loop that we have made there, and then your strap can go through. Now, like mine, you are probably going to need to use a awl just to help that through. And then you can pull the rest of your strap through. Once they are out of the way, you can then rough up the edges where your pocket is going to be and then glue that in place. And once that is on, you can then go around with your dividers and then stitch mark this all the way around. And then using the same method that we did earlier, we're going to stitch this onto our main bag. So once that's stitched on, we're going to do the stitch marks onto our main bag and they are marked on the pattern if you haven't already and then stitch mark all the way along that line. We're then going to mark three eighths of an inch or nine millimeters down from that mark that we made earlier when we were doing our edging. And that is where our internal pocket is going to sit. And once we've marked that on, we are going to glue along one of the long sides and then on the one side of our internal divider, as well as around the edge of one of our gussets. Now we're going to start by sticking our internal divider in and that is going to sit at that three eighths or nine millimeters from the top mark that we have made. We want that nice and flush with the edge. And once that's stuck in, you can then rough the top edge of that and then put some glue along here. 
Once we've done that, we are then ready to glue in and attach our gussets. Now, this is quite fiddly, and the first one is a lot harder than the second one. So what we're gonna do is start by sticking the top together at the front, and then we're gonna fold that around and stick the top of the other side of the gusset in place and then we can work around the rest of the gusset to get that in line nice and as flush as possible with the main body of the bag. Now like I said this is incredibly fiddly and what I like to do is try and get the long sides attached first and then I will move the bag over and do around the bottom. Now if you've got some bulldog clips for this this is an ideal time to use them and they're just going to help keep everything in place. And if you need to remove and then re-add your gusset, you can do that, that is absolutely fine. You may need to add a bit of extra glue on if you do do that, or even if you're just removing it in places. Once you are happy, you've got your gusset glued in, we can start stitching. So on this, we're going to do two back stitches and then one stitch over the edge where we cross our needles over. And now this stitching of the gusset can be a bit awkward because it is quite big. So what I've done is I've actually propped the bag up on its side with the weights or the pattern weights that I have in the workshop as well as a large water bottle just to get it to stand up nice and straight and make it a bit easier for me when I'm stitching. And when we get to the other side of our gusset, we're going to do one stitch over the edge and then do two and a half back stitches. So this matches our original side. Once you've done your back stitches, you can then trim the ends of your thread and put some PVA glue in to keep them from moving. And then we are ready to stick in the other side of our divider. Now, this is a bit awkward because the divider is longer than our bag is. So you might need to just move that around a bit, but get that stuck nice and flush with the edge of your main bag. And then once that's stuck down, rough the edges up with your edge rougher and then you can glue along all the way down there as well as the rest of the bag and glue the gusset as well and then you can start to assemble this side of your bag. Now like I said the second gusset is a bit easier to put in place because the bag is already moulded pretty much to the shape that it needs to be. And again I like to work the long edges first and then when I'm happy with that I will then glue the bottom in. And you want to get this as nice and flush as possible. Now there might be a little bit of overhanging which is absolutely fine because we can trim that off at a later date. Now once you're happy you've got your gusset glued in I like to put my pattern weights actually inside the bag at this point because it now makes it nice and solid for when I am stitching. And we're going to start by doing our back stitches, including one over the edge of the end of the gusset. And then we can stitch the rest of the bag as normal, stitching towards us using the saddle stitch method.
And so hopefully your bag is now looking a little bit like this. And what we're gonna do with our wooden burnisher, we're actually gonna flatten these stitches on the main bag. And then we can punch the holes in our straps. And then we're gonna put the bag to one side whilst we make our buckle shapes. So we're gonna start by marking out the center for our crew punch and then drawing on a couple of tram lines just to make sure we get that nice and central on that strap. And once you're happy with your tram lines, you can punch that crew all the way through and do that on both pieces. We can then mark on where the legs of our magnet need to go. And using our sharpened screwdriver, we can push that all the way through. Now we've done that, we can use our larger edge tool and we're actually going to take out the back of the crew and that's going to help that buckle tongue sit nice in our strap. And then once we've done that, we can fit the other part of our magnet. And once we've done that, we can then start to glue these together. So I'm using a leather loop on mine, but if you are using a metal loop, you're gonna to want to make sure you insert that at this point. And then once your shapes have been glued together, we're gonna to mark on as close to the buckle as we can where we can do our stitching. And then using our dividers, we're gonna draw around the whole of the buckle shape and then we can do our stitch marking along these lines. And now I'm using a leather loop for mine and I like my loops quite tight. And so I'm gonna wrap my loop in around one thickness of leather and mark where that touches and then cut that off. And I'm gonna cut three of these because we're gonna need one later for the shoulder strap. Now, if you like your loops to be a bit looser or you don't have a looping stick, you're gonna to want to use the same method, but around two thicknesses of leather, not the one thickness like what I have. Now we have our loops cut out, we're just gonna offer them up to the center of our strap where the crew is, and then mark on the edge where that is, and then we know how far in that the loop can sit. We're then gonna pop that in, and then we can start stitching, starting with a back stitch, and then doing one stitch over the edge to get that nice and tight on our buckle. Now, when it comes to stitching in loops, when I get to the other end of the tape, what I do is I actually pre all the last four holes and then put the loop in, and then I will then re all the holes with the loop in place. And it's a bit easier because we're only going through the thickness of the loop. Once you've finished stitching, you can trim your threads and then use a bit of PVA glue in the ends to keep them in place. And we're now going to start working on our shoulder strap. So the measurements are marked on the information sheet that you have with your downloads. And we're going to start by using our point strap pattern from earlier and mark on the point and the first three holes. We're then going to set our dividers to this distance and then mark on further holes until we have 11 in total. We can then set our dividers to the half width of the strap and then even up all of our holes to make sure that they are nice and central on our strap. We are then going to mark the overall measurement which is in your guide and cut that to length and then nick the corners. Now as this is our turn end, what we're going to do is mark 4 inches or 100 millimeters from the end and draw a line across and that is going to be where our turn finishes. What we're going to do now is then cut the buckle strap and again the information for that is in the information pack that you got with your downloads. Now one of the ends on this strap is going to be a buckle turn so on that end we're going to mark two inches or 50 millimeters on the grain side and just draw a small line and that's going to be the center of our crew. We're then going to flip that over and on the flesh side draw a four inch or 800 millimeter mark on both ends and then we can edge in between those points on the flesh and all around on the grain side. 
on the point strap we can merge, we can edge all around on the grain side and then just miss out that underneath piece where the turn is going to be on the flesh side. Once we've done that, we can then stain and polish and crease the edges. And then we're going to punch our crew. So again, with our dividers, we can draw on our tram lines for that to make that nice and easy for us. Once we've got that on, we can then punch the crew punch all the way through. And take out the back with our number six edge tool. And then we're going to make sure we have a nice sharp knife and then we're going to skive the ends of our turn to half thickness and we want that to be about 5 eighths of an inch or 16 millimeters long. Once we've done that we can then start assembling. So I started mine by doing both of the ends with the trigger clip and again once we've got that in we're going to draw on our stitch mark lines and even that up with our set square on both sides. we can then do our stitch marking and then we're going to stitch these two on. So if you're intending on using a running loop we can now mark for this. Now for mine I'm going to wrap mine around two thicknesses of leather and then just mark with my thumb where they overlap. And now I do have a full more in-depth video on this which I will put a link to as this is just going to go over a brief way of how to do your running loops. So once you've cut it out and nick the corners, you can then wrap it round again and mark where the ends meet and then stitch mark all the way through on both ends. And then we're just going to skive each end to half thickness and then do a bit of staining so we can't see any raw edges in our loop. We're then going to put a single needle on a piece of thread and single hand stitch our running loop together. And again, like I said, there's more information in the video that I've linked in the description of this video. Once we've done that and we've done our finishing touches to it, we can then pop that onto our main buckle strap and then glue our buckle turn down. And then we're going to mark for our stitch marking as we did earlier, even things up with our set square and then draw in the line with our dividers. And then we can stitch mark this and then once we've done stitch marking we're going to grab our loop that we cut earlier mark where that needs to be and pop that in between the layers before stitching this turn And now we've done that, we're going to punch the holes in our main shoulder strap and then start doing our finishing touches. So like I said, I use a, a loop stick to block the loops on my work. And I'm just going to put that in and then start doing the finishing touches. So restaining and polishing the edges before recreasing the loop as well as all the way around the turn on my buckle turn. And then we can just do the finishing touches on the rest of our things. So we're going to start by cutting out the excess off of our shoulder pad and then doing some edging. And then we can do our staining and polishing and we are going to add tulkanol as well at this point to get our edges nice and polished. And then we can re-crease and we're going to crease on both sides. Once we've done that, we can then stretch the loops like we did earlier with our bone folder. And then we can thread our point strap through our shoulder pad and attach it to our buckle strap. We can now put that to one side whilst we do the finishing touches on the rest of our bag. So the main bag, we're going to start by using some crap rubber to re remove any excess glue. And then we'll trim any excess leather before sanding with our sanding block. And now you might need to go over and re-edge this with your number one edge tool, and that is absolutely fine. Once we've done that, we can then re-stain and polish the edges and then apply Tolkanol all around the edges of our bag and get them nice and shiny with our wooden burnisher. We're also going to finish any other bits at this point as well. 
and then we're going to recrease everything including the inside of those gussets and then we can attach our buckle safes to our point straps and then we have finished our bag So that is it. Now, if you want to create this bag, as always, there is a link in the description for the patterns. And if you don't want to make the bag, but you do want the bag, there is also a link for you to purchase this one that I made here in this video. Now, I hope you enjoyed watching. And if you did, please click the thumbs up button and subscribe for more videos and tutorials. And if you would like to support the channel further, there is a link in the description to our Patreon page. That is it from me, and I shall see you in the next video.